Something I think we can all agree on is that over the last two years of my time on YouTube, I've definitely had my ups and downs. But if there's one thing, one thing that I can guarantee you guys, it's this. I'm not going anywhere. Better late than never, right? Hello ladies and gentlemen, and after a very, very long wait, welcome to the third episode of Let's Fucking Play Hitman Absolution. Seeing as though this video has been delayed by more than two fucking years now, let's not waste any time and jump straight into it. Today we find ourselves standing in a derelict alleyway in the city of Chicago, and we're here to make a visit to the Terminus Hotel. What for, I hear you ask? Well... Uh... I have no fucking idea. Well, what do you expect? It has been over two years. Alright, looks like we could use a quick refresher. Following the events of Hitman Blood Money, Agent 47's handler with the ICA, Diana Burnwood, goes rogue, which results in her sabotaging and ultimately publicly exposing the agency. For her treason, the agency assigns 47 to kill Diana and capture and bring to them a young girl named Victoria who is in Diana's care. 47 locates and shoots Diana, who in her dying moments asks him to take Victoria and run to prevent the agency from getting their hands on her. Out of respect for his career-long colleague, 47 agrees and decides to also fuck over the agency and takes Victoria to a Catholic orphanage somewhere in Chicago where he believes that she'll be safe. 47 then gets in contact with an agency informant named Birdie, who is willing to assist him but only after he kills a wealthy gangster who calls himself the King of Chinatown. Naturally, 47 complies and kills the cunt. Fuck! Oh! E e e e e e after doing so, 47 meets with Birdie, seeking information on Victoria and why the agency wants her so badly. Birdie agrees to find any information he can, but only for a price. Because, you know, killing someone in cold blood wasn't enough for the weird pigeon-loving fuck. As payment, 47 relinquishes his beloved silver ballers and returns to his seedy hotel room where he waits for Birdie's call. He soon gets the call he's waiting for and Birdie tells him about a man known as Blake Dexter, the CEO of Dexter Industries, who may have more information on Victoria. 47 learns that Dexter is at the Terminus Hotel on the 8th floor and sets out to find him, which brings us to today's episode. So now that we're up to speed, let's go and explore the Terminus Hotel as we search for Blake Dexter. Our first objective for today is to gain access to the upper floors, and as we make our way down the alleyway towards the hotel, we spot a homeless guy. <sighs> Look at me, sitting here in my own filth. Drinking myself to death. Christ, how on earth did I let my life come to this? I used to be a wealthy business executive. Nice car, big house, beautiful family. Oh, my family. I don't have a family. At least, not anymore. I can't even remember the last time it was I saw my- <laughs> Don't kill him. Actually, while we're on the subject, this particular homeless guy must have seen some pretty fucked up things in his time, as it appears that nothing seems to bother him too much. Visibly arming yourself? Man. Aiming your gun at him? Doesn't give a fuck. Shooting at him? Fuck your bullets. Dragging by him the body of someone you've clearly just murdered? Sees that shit every day. Executing someone at his feet? Whatever, cunt. Yep, this guy appears to be a total fucking badass. Fucking hell, this guy must not be afraid of anything. Oh shit, help me, someone! Except for glass bottles, it would seem. 
Jesus Christ! Someone, anybody, help me, please! Glass! There's glass everywhere! Anyway, we're beginning to get a bit carried away here. So let's keep ourselves moving and proceed to the end of the alleyway where we'll pause momentarily on the street at the base of the hotel. Now at this point, there are several access points that we can use to gain entry to the hotel. We have a sewer entrance on our left, the hotel's main entrance directly in front of us, and a side entrance to the right of the building. We are eventually going to make our way inside via the basement entrance on the right, but first we have some minor business to take care of in the hotel's foyer. So let's cross the empty street and make our way through the front door. Oh! Buddy! You're talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, you. Look, upstairs is closed. Off limits. Got it? After taking a moment to absorb the quaint Ooh, interior of the I'm, hotel I'm foyer, the hotel. we'll hey, turn to the right, walk our way past the reception desk, and stealthily trespass into a restricted area behind the office, where we'll find a sweet little old lady enjoying a rather pleasant telephone conversation with a good friend of hers. Are you even listening? I don't give a fuck. You know there are only two kinds of people in this world. My kind and assholes. And it's obvious which one you are. Did I say sweet little old lady? Sorry, I meant vulgar old cow. Anyway, from here we'll discreetly make our way through the nearby doorway to the receptionist's office and grab the evidence from the desk to boost our score. We'll then turn around and sneak back through the way we came as we head back towards the front door. And your balls would be paraded around the city like some fallen Middle Eastern dictator. Dick face! You're pathetic! Impotent little fucking prick! Fucking hell! Well, I think I've heard about enough of this. If no one else is going to stand up to this abusive old bag, I yeah, will. You. Cause you don't know how to do You probably don't hmm. even know what a real This ought to do the trick. No, you don't. Men would eat their own face to get a piece of me in my youth. Oh man, you should have seen me. Ha! <laughs> I can hear by the silence that you are no man. Hey, come on upstairs, see if you can handle a woman like me. Wom, kiss my- Oh my god! Grandma! You know what to do, Randy. I sure do, Bobby. Fusion! <laughs> You've done it now, assassin! Prepare to feel the ultimate power of the mighty Randy Baba! <laughs> hey! Thanks, but I think I'll pass. Refocusing once again on the mission at hand, after securing the aforementioned evidence, we won't brutally murder the vulgar old granny and her mutated minions, but rather, simply make our way out of the restricted area, calmly walk back through the foyer, and exit the hotel. Once we're back outside, we'll calmly and professionally stroll our way down the street as we approach an alleyway that runs alongside the hotel. As we near the access point, we'll hide behind whatever the fuck this thing is and wait for the nearby gentlemen to finish their conversation so that we can sneak through the gate. When the time is right, we'll carefully sneak our way in and immediately move behind the nearby brick wall to shield ourselves from sight. Now we'll just hang tight here for a while until the old lady moves away from the window and the goon to our left begins to make his way towards the rear of the alley. After he patrols past us, we'll make a quick, yet discreet move to the nearby garbage bin and get inside. As soon as we're hidden, we spot the old lady staring out of yet another window. So it's a good thing that we got into the bin when we did, otherwise we would have most definitely been spotted. After a short while, the old lady will remove herself from the window and return inside. At this point, we'll wait just a few more seconds to ensure that the same goon from before has continued his way towards the end of the alleyway before exiting the bin, making our way down the staircase, and entering the hotel basement. Man, he's got some balls. Wouldn't catch me messing around with electricity in a flooded pit. Not for a million bucks, no sir! Electricity? Flooded pit? 
Now that's something we've got to see. Got some balls. Well, what do you know? There actually is some complete dickhead throwing occupational health and safety to the wind and working with electricity while standing in a flooded pit. Because, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Hey, Joel, do you really think that it's safe to be working with such high voltage electricity in a pool of water like that? Yeah, yeah, calm down, Simon. It's all good. I've already disconnected the power supply to this area. So unless someone actually goes out of their way to switch the generator back on and pulls that lever up there, I'll be just... That'll teach you for breaching your occupational health and safety duties. While we're on the subject of electricians, there's actually a couple of interesting challenges featured within this mission of Hitman Absolution, and two of them are named the Electrician, Parts 1 and 2 respectively. To achieve these, we need to kill a number of Dexter's goons with a screwdriver without being seen. So before we return to the mission at hand, let's quickly do that, shall we? So for the purpose of these challenges, rather than infiltrating the premise by either the front or right hand side entrance, we'll instead make our way to the sewer entrance to the left. We'll slide down the ladder, briefly move through the sewers and climb into the basement via the opening. Following that, we'll pick up this wrench and silently move down the corridor, before taking cover against this crate and then lobbing the wrench to divert the attention of the nearby guard. What? Hey! It's a weird freaking sound. When he's on the move, we'll sneak our way past him and move into the main area of the pit where we'll non-lethally dispose of the dodgy electrician. Just kidding. We'll then dump his body into the nearby container and take his clothes before entering the adjacent room and grabbing ourselves a screwdriver. Now that we're armed with our weapon of choice, it's time to claim our first victim. Wait, look there, pretty... <laughs> this completes the first part of the challenge. For part two, we have to discreetly kill another five of Dexter's goons, but this time by throwing a screwdriver at their skulls. And fortunately enough, our first victim's death has startled some of the people on the level above us. So we'll hide behind this barrel and wait for our next victim to reveal himself. Hey buddy, I just thought of the funniest thing to- <gasps> Gerald! What sick, demented human being has enacted such a horrible criminal offence against your head? <laughs> that would be me. That's one goon down and four to go. So let's reclaim our screwdriver, subtly make our way through the basement, and head outside as we seek out some more targets. Finding ourselves in a familiar alleyway, we'll momentarily pause on the staircase and watch as two more of Dexter's goons patrol the area. How you doing? I'm good, mate. Hey! Thanks for asking. Well, there it goes. My very last cigarette ever. Wow. I feel healthier all day. <laughs> Thank you! That takes care of goons number two and three. Now we'll stash this body in the nearby garbage bin to hide it from sight, casually stroll our way out of the alleyway, and make our way towards the front entrance of the hotel, where we'll set off the nearby car alarm. And wait patiently for a goon to walk outside and investigate. Oh, God damn it! Who's been messing around with this car? Well? Be a man! Show you say I That's four goons down and only one standing between us and completing the second part of the electrician challenge. So let's make our way back towards the hotel foyer in search of our final victim. This time after entering the hotel, we'll branch off to the left and head to the bathroom, where we'll lie and wait for the fifth and final person that we're going to introduce to the pointy end of our trusty screwdriver. Naturally, it doesn't take long for our patience to pay off. Oh man, looks like it's time to break the old seal. Uh, excuse me bro, 
Do you mind not staring at me menacingly while I try to use the bathroom? Kinda makes it hard for me to take a play! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is both parts of the electrician challenge done and dusted. So let's conclude the challenge on a professional note by concealing the body in the conveniently located container hey before finally getting back to what we're supposed to be doing here. Returning now to the basement area that we just infiltrated, we're going to let the electrician live to endanger himself and others another day, as we discreetly sneak our way into a room to the right hand side of the basement that leads directly to the elevator we'll be taking to the upper floors. Taking cover behind this crate, we'll wait until the coast is clear, summon the elevator, and then return to our original hiding place as we await its arrival. Once the elevator gets to the basement and the coast is clear, we'll get inside it and make our way to the upper floors, completing our first major objective. Sorry, sir. We've had elevator problems all day. They're being fixed as we speak. <sighs> anyway, as we step off the elevator at the seventh floor, our next goal Stairwell is to get to the eighth floor. So to begin with, we'll make our way across the common room and enter the bathroom. From here, we'll enter and crawl our way through the nearby ventilation shaft, re-emerging in the hotel supply closet when the coast is clear. We're here for that movie reel seated on the shelf directly across from us, which will come in handy a bit later on. Once we've got what we came here for, we'll make our way back into the bathroom via the same ventilation shaft and casually walk back into the common area. We will then make our way down this hallway, taking a sharp right at the end, followed by an immediate left. Then, we'll stop, shoulder up against this wall, and glance back at the goon standing guard by the open window. We want to climb out of that window, but naturally we can't do that while he's standing there. So we'll use the nearby radio to lure him away. Hey, that sounds like a radio! There aren't any radios allowed in this hotel! This must be dealt with! With the goon temporarily out of the way, we'll climb through the open window and onto the ledge outside, traversing our way to the next open window before climbing back inside. Upon our re-entry, we'll climb up the nearby staircase and voila! We've reached the 8th floor. And now all that we need to do is make our way through this door and- I need water. Not you, you fuckwit! Piss off! Anyway, now that we've reached the 8th floor, we have only one objective remaining. To get to room 899. This shouldn't be too difficult being the super stealthy silent assassin we are, but naturally, we're going to need to keep a low profile for things to go smoothly. Moving through this door to the left, we find ourselves in a projector room. Now, remember the movie reel we swiped from the janitor supply closet on the 7th floor? Well, this is where it'll come in handy, albeit only for a few extra points. We've just got to wait for the two nearby goons to quit their bickering and get the fuck out of our way. Hey! Turn on the projector, mate. Nuh-uh! You turn it on! I asked you first. I asked you first! Now you're just being immature. Now you're just being immature. Hey, come on! I've had a gut full of your shit! Stop being a fuckhead and just turn the fucking projector! Oh, oh, what the? Holy shit! I'll turn on the fucking projector! An effective approach, but hardly the most professional. Let's try that again and keep things a little cleaner this time. After a little bit of patience, soon one of the goons will exit the room and the other will keep his back turned long enough for us to utilize the movie reel we procured earlier and start the projector.
We will then exit the room the way we came in and make our way through the common area, which is now relatively free of enemies for the time being, as most of them have gone to check out the movie we've put on for them. Not all of them will be occupied for long though. So using the limited window of time we have, we'll sneak our way down the corridor, enter the ballroom on the left, and take the door on our immediate right into a small adjacent room currently occupied by only a single goon, who appears to have the task of guarding the evidence on the table directly in front of him. So? I must do everything that I can to prevent this evidence from falling into the wrong hands, even if that means not taking my eyes off of it for a single s- <gasps> A glass bottle! Those things are worth money at recycling depots! With the goon's attention now diverted, we'll take the opportunity to approach the table and secure the evidence and the extra points that go with it. After that, we'll quickly duck back down behind the table as we prepare for the distracted goon to turn back around. But not only that, there's also a second goon on his way back from the movie presentation we organised earlier. So we'll have to time our movements so that neither he or the goon already in the room notice our presence. Once we're in the clear, we'll head back through the door, make our way back through the ballroom and take an immediate left into the hallway, where we'll quickly pick the lock while the coast is clear to gain access to room 899. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the home stretch. But before we proceed with and complete today's mission, let's quickly take a look at yet another interesting challenge that can be undertaken on the Terminus Hotel's upper floors. Housekeeping, which requires us to eliminate 10 enemies while again remaining unseen. So what are we waiting for? Let's get cracking. We'll start this challenge the very moment we step out of the elevator onto the seventh floor. After equipping our signature fibre wire, we'll jog our way down the corridor until we've turned both corners and encounter this goon. Hey, what are you running for? Ah, uh, so I can briefly get your attention and then strangle you when you turn around? Ha! That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Ha! <laughs> Wait for me to turn around so you can strangle me. What a load of... After silently disposing of goon number one of ten, we'll dump his body down the nearby laundry chute and immediately turn on the nearby radio, before hiding behind the nearby corner and lying in wait. Oh my god! What did I say about the hotel's no radio policy? I swear, if I hear this thing get switched on one more time, I'm going to... And down the laundry chute he goes. That's two down, eight to go. Now, let's simply repeat this process two more times. Six out of those nine times. Fuck's sake, stupid fucking radio being switched on again. Whoever keeps switching on this radio, you're really beginning to fail. Yeah, for Christ's sake! How many people does it take to switch this thing off before it actually stays open? So far, so good. Now let's take our trusty radio with us on our journey to complete the rest of the challenge. As we make our way back through the common room, we notice that there are three guards chilling in the lounge area and that there are three more guards standing in the stairwell. So now that we know what we're dealing with, we'll relocate ourselves to the nearby bathroom, place the radio on the floor, and... What the fuck? I mean, come on, seriously! Who listens to a radio in the bathroom? I mean, Jesus! There's no one in here, for Christ's sake! There! That's much better. Nothing like a little piece oh. and... <laughs> That's five down and we're halfway to our quota. So let's stash this guy's body in the nearby toilet cubicle and... You guessed it. Repeat the process as many times as necessary. There goes that goddamn radio again. I'm really beginning to think that somebody is doing this on purpose. <laughs> But did you also know that six out of those nine 
time. Humble beginnings. Ah. Um. Well. Collateral damage. Dexter Industries has come a long way. Right. That does it. I'm sick and tired of this stupid fucking. Jesus, man. No need to get so angry. If it pisses you off that much, then just switch it off. See? Was that really so- Oh, for fuck's sake. Another cleaning lady? Well... Uh... The community of hope, where it all We employ 61% of the local. Hmm. It's only just occurred to me that I've witnessed seven people come into this bathroom, and none of them come out. So, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have. Oh, oh, yes, no, you probably shouldn't have. And that's the simplest way of overcoming the housekeeping challenge in this mission, ladies and gentlemen. So let's take a quick moment to admire the amount of dead people we can fit into a single toilet cubicle before returning to the mission at hand, where we're just about to access room 899. After getting past the locked door, we'll approach the door directly in front of us, but rather than use it to enter room 899, we'll instead make use of the nearby ventilation shaft for a more stealthy approach. And as we crawl our way through the narrow crawl space, the mission comes to an end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes episode 3 of Let's Fucking Play Hitman Absolution. I know that this video has been over two years in the making and I sincerely apologize for such a monumental absence. Needless to say, a lot can and has changed over my two and a bit year absence to the extent that right now I don't even know where to start explaining things. I know that at this stage it's still only very early days and my consistency track record has been absolutely shithouse over the past few years. But all I can say for now is that it feels fucking great to be back making videos again and I really look forward to continuing to get back into the swing of things. Until next time guys, I love you all, peace.